Oh hi, I'm Jen and welcome to my studio and today we have a Tappy Talk. And my cat Bento has joined us for this Tappy Talk, hello. Um, today uh, we're actually going to be talking about counting. I have gotten so many requests to talk about how do you count. Um, how do you count music, not how do you count. I have a degree in how you count. I actually have two degrees in how you count. Because first I do have a degree in math. That's a degree in counting. But I have a degree in music theory, which is literally how do you count music. So as a tap dancer, we do need to know how to count music because we are not just dancers, we are musicians. So today I thought I would do a basic how to count music and then how it translates to your steps kind of video for you. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is note values. So these note values are your basic five that you're gonna use. Now there's more than this, but if you guys want me to do like another video on this where we get into the more advanced note values, we can do that. But these are your basic five that you're gonna use as a tap dancer. And honestly, two of them, you're not gonna use that much. So you have a whole note, which is four beats. You have a half note, which is two beats. You have a quarter note, which is one beat. You have an eighth note, which is half a beat each. <laughs> and then you have 16th notes, which is a quarter of a beat each. That probably sounds really weird. Like why is a whole four and a quarter one? That doesn't make sense. But you have to see it as a measure. So a measure of music in common time, four, four time, which is four beats per measure. So that's that five, six, seven, eight. That's four, four time. You have four beats that you're counting. Ready, ready, set, go. That's four beats. A whole note means it's the whole measure long, which is why it has four beats. Half note means it's half the measure long, two beats. A quarter, a quarter of the measure, one beat. An eighth of the measure, half a beat. A sixteenth of the measure, see what I mean? A quarter of the beat. So in a typical 4-4 four, four time, you're going to get four quarter notes in a, in a measure. So that's your 5, 6, 7, 8. Those are quarter notes. And then five and six and seven and eight. Those are your eighth notes. So that's something that we'll get into in a minute, but I wanted to give you examples of steps that fit these different notes to put it in more of a tap dancer context. So a whole note. This is one you're not gonna use very much. No step we do goes one, two, three, four. It, no step we do does that. So I did put slides there because you can do a slide for four beats if you're really fancy. You can do a slide for four beats, or it's four fast beats. So it's one note that lasts for four counts. Tap dancers don't do that per se, because our notes tend to be shorter. But slides. Then you have half note. So that's one, two. It's got to last two beats. I put drags there. And then I have this little arrow, which means it's interchangeable. The slides or drags can be two beats, one beat, because you got that little, like, I have tap shoes on, so it's like one, two. Just drag or like kind of drag. So I wish you guys could see my feet, but there was no way to get you to see my feet and this at the same time, so here we are. Um, but so two beats, four beats, not really that useful. So that's why we're touching on it, but not a thing. Quarter note, that is the quintessential five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four. That's your quarter note. So a good step, a step is a quarter note, one. Or you've got a cramp roll, step, step, heel, heel. If it's a nice slow cramp roll, you've got one, two, three, four. Anything can be done in quarter notes, but typically a step is a good solid quarter note. It's one. Um, an eighth note, a set of eighth notes. You usually find them in twos or fours. And a set of eighth notes and eight or one and. I put ball change here because it's Five, six, seven, and eight. Ball change. Step, 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 ball change. And eight. So you've got that and eight. Two notes, two eighth notes. Ball change is a good way to think about it. Then you have paradiddles. You have one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. One e and a, two e and a, three e. That's really hard to do sitting down. There we go. So you have paradiddles, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. That's sixteenth notes. Now you have four, four notes per one beat because it's a quarter of the beat, so you can fit four. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. 
So hopefully that helps you guys like really envision this step, fitting the note value. You can also do like cramp rolls as 16th notes, you can do shuffles as eighth notes, or you can do lots of things. Um, now how to count, that's this bottom area. It says how to count. I don't even know if you can read that part, but hopefully you guys can read the important part. And again, if I look through the footage and I think you guys can't read this, I will put it much better up on the screen and maybe that's what you're looking at instead of me just pointing at something. So how to count quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Easy. How to count quarter notes because there are four of them per measure. One, two, three, four. And everything we're talking about is in four, four time. So four beats per measure, quarter note gets the beat, it's that one, two, three, four. We're not talking about waltzes, we're not talking about five, we're not talking about any of that. Today we're just talking about four beats per measure. So one, two, three, four, quarter notes. How do you count eighth notes? Now instead of numbers, we gotta add a word. We add and, one and, two and, three and, four and. So we've subdivided, this is a good musical term, we've subdivided those four into eight instead of going one, two, three, four, we have one and two and three and four. So eighth notes, you add that and. Now there's something here that wasn't up here because you can use this next thing as a combination of any of these notes. Triplets. We work with triplets a lot as tap dancers. So I have it here, you subdivide it into three sounds per note. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So that's how you can count triplets. You add a, a, uh, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, triple it, triple it, da, 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 da. And so you have, sorry, I get a little into it. Um, so you have that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but you're not having to count the numbers. You just have this one and a, two and a, three and a, four. And it rolls off the tongue nice and easy. So that's how you count triplets, one and a. Uh. So eighth notes, you add the and, triplets, you add the and, a. Uh. Now 16th notes. You add another letter. <laughs> now you have one E and a, two E and a. So you add that little E and it rolls off the tongue nice and fast. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And you have that like, a three E is probably the weirdest one, but you have that da 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 and you can actually count it out because you've added these letters. You can go, and your paradiddles go, five E and a, six E and a, seven and a, eight. You add that E, and now you can verbally translate to your students or to yourself or write it down, 16th notes and how the rhythm is supposed to go. Now this is assuming all the rhythms are just like straight, one and a, two and a, three, or one and, two and, and not getting fancy with syncopation. We can talk about syncopation in another video, but I did want to give you a general idea on how notes work and how they translate to tap steps. So I hope this helped you guys a lot. Um, it's a very brief, basic overview, but if you want more, let me know. I am such a fan of music theory and I always get so scared that I'm going to overload my students with it because I can get a little into it. So I'm trying to skim the surface today, but let me know what you guys want. I love doing these tappy talks for you. Um, for more tappy talks and tutorials and tap dance videos and uh, pretty much everything that you could want as a dancer, uh, please subscribe to this channel and join the tap fam. It would mean the world to me if you did. And I'm never gonna stop giving you guys really awesome things like lessons like this and stuff that a tap dancer really could benefit from knowing. Or just making you guys fun dances and teaching them to you, why not? So please join the tap fam and subscribe. Also hit the thumbs up button if you are so glad that this video is here so that maybe you can show it to your class and not have to teach them about this. <laughs> no, hit the thumbs up button because music theory is awesome. Or hit the thumbs up button because you're a tap dancer and you want other tap dancers to find this video because that's how the thumbs up button works and that's why all your YouTube friends are like, hit the thumbs up please. It's not just for us to go, oh, they liked it. It's that YouTube goes, oh, people like that. We should, so. Um, but yeah, I have so much fun doing these videos and as always, thank you for counting with me. <laughs>